pleased to be back with you. I had an unfortunate hiatus, <laughs> unplanned, unscheduled. Went to see my cardiologist the Tuesday after Labor Day. Within 36 hours, he had me over at Bay State in Springfield for a heart procedure. Uh, the stents they put in years ago needed some definite cleaning up and uh, readjusting. Good part, I'm on the men, and they bought me another five to seven years, just so you understand. Stints in your heart are like hip replacements. They do not last forever. But the main thing, I'm here, and over these last three weeks, so many things have happened. I thought I needed to speak up America and bring it to the people again so we can address the unaddressed before the unaddressed becomes America's undoing. So fortunately, at the end of this coming week, because this will air Monday, the uh, 3rd of October, on the 8th, Saturday, an introduction invitation to all and any Pine Air Valley Access TV event with NoHo Live Speak Up America, which is supporting the Tuskegee Toddlers Fund. And what the Toddlers Fund does is provides dry butts and nutrition for our young ones in these times where if you have one kid, you're in trouble. If you have two or three and you're not making over a grand a week, you're out of gas. <laughs> and we further state as part of our mission, only the elected can determine how we, the people, live. Independent of personal pursuits of happiness may not be infringed upon, impeded, or restrained. For those of you who don't know, myself, my ministry partners, along with my brother, who is retired from the University of Colorado at Boulder, he taught political administration, helped me craft the Taylor Floyd Honesty and Equitable Equality Amendment and the New Deal 2020, which we credit to the happenings of uh, Floyd and Arbery. Anyhow, we will be on the steps of the First Church, downtown Northampton, collecting opinion from the public, the politician, the ministry, and anyone public who wants to voice their opinion on the state of America and how much these two amendments would do to better us, make us one society instead of a splintered society. As I said, we will be there. There will be potluck food, Harold's ice cream. We do not ask for anything for it except give what you can because we love our babies and our children. As I say, we would appreciate your best thoughts, opinions, and criticism. This People's Congress event, which I'll call Voters' Event, will present final additions and adjustments to the amendments over the lame duck session. Uh, before I go on, now that you know where it is and what it is, I'm going on the road. When I leave here, the Thursday after Columbus Day, and I'll be meeting with the president of the NAACP in Saginaw, Michigan. We'll take it to East Lansing, the capital, and to Detroit and Ann Arbor. Uh, when I finish there, uh, I'll be going down to North Carolina, 
where my wife's down there looking for our retirement place now. And while I'm down there, uh, come uh, the 29th, 30th, the weekend uh, of Halloween, I'll be seeking the counsel of Bishop Barber's camp. And on the weekend before election, I'll be seeking the counsel of Representative Congressman Jim Claiborne's camp. Between all of this, we hope to have this hammered out and finalized, the wording, what we're addressing in both amendments. And then in January, we'll spend from Martin Luther King Day to President's Day. I'm asking all of the ministries all of the political activists, and when I say political activists, I mean from the legal women's voters and all the women's rights groups, along with the NAACP, the NAN, uh, which is, if you don't know, the president of it and director is a, a Reverend Tolliver in Tallahassee. Uh, though you probably know them through uh, Al Sharpton. And like Al Sharpton says, these amendments are the gotcha amendments. So let me move on to say, I ask all of America's brothers and sisters of humanity to endeavor to find the fortitude as Sam Adams, our first American patriot, stated. We must muster all of our courage. We must summon the fortitude to prevail. Now to further explain, our mission is called cures instead of band-aids. We the people must decree by referendum ballot and ratify constitutionally the Taylor Floyd Honesty and Equitable Equality Amendment in tandem with the Arbery Brooks New Deal 2020. These readings can be found in season six of both amendments on YouTube. Just put in downtown Daniel Evans and they'll come up with season, on season six. Uh, so you can familiarize yourself, general America, with what we're proposing and what we're talking about. As the fourth wheel of government, we the people must end our civilian civil war. So to speak, white privilege, male privilege, any kind of privilege must become human privilege. We propose skin in the game, a piece of the pie, and no one raked over the coals. These things must become reality. We have an outline that would make things where the destitute become working poor, working poor become middle class, middle class becomes upper middle class, and the affluent still remain affluent. We not only free up over $3 trillion locally, state, and federal dollars, we also create a perpetual stimulus. Now, before I go on, just because you create a stimulus, just because you pull people up by the bootstraps or give them bootstraps if they don't have any, the most important part that I need to talk to people before we get to Martin Luther King Day and our final draft that we present for the people to get signatures nationally in all states is how will the money be spent for the biggest bang, the greatest efficacy, 
once we insert these policies into our government and everyday life. These initiatives blueprint and outline the roadmap to socio, economic, and ethnic equitable equality. Do the math. It will be outlined in New Deal 2020, part one. We can create a deficit-free pay-as-you-go that actually delivers the needs of everybody in America, no matter what your status, race, or color, or ethnicity. Find the amendment readings on YouTube. Just enter downtown Daniel Evans. You can also go to Mass Live, find a bio of me and my past and what I plan for the future uh, by entering downtown Daniel Evans, story by Laura Newberry. Now, let me get back to where I started. This is my first message to the world, February 2020. The great American discussion has begun. Our collective future is intertwined and engraved. Our children's children face adversities of enormous astronomical proportion. No matter how we look, pray, or socialize, we the people are our own answer. We are the fourth wheel of government. We must undertake serious consideration about the issues that create a future of equitable honesty with ethically moral growth and upward mobility for all. Consider the proposed ballot initiatives incorporated with the Honesty and Equitable Equality Amendment and New Deal 2020. These are realistic, cost-effective solutions aimed at dredging the swamp, economic and judicial equality, health and educational upgrades, political process reforms, affirmative entitlements based purely on the need of as the only variable that can be considered as if these programs are distributed. We also have election process reform. Uh, you can find that in season six also on YouTube. Uh, look for me sitting with Reverend McSherry uh, here in downtown Northampton uh, discussing not only what needs to be, but what must be for us to all get to a place where every vote counts and socially we look at each other and treat each other with the equitable equality I speak of. Just so you know, I am a concerned liberal conservative, and when I say liberal, I'll say progressive conservative, registered as an independent, promoting the best of all ideas and promoting access to betterment for all. The strongest pillar of this foundation is that working America has the skin in the game I mentioned as a large piece of the pie. It is possible to achieve a deficit-free America, as I've stated. America that is more prosperous for all workers and citizens. We must be mindful of how we play the game. And we must teach our children that 
There is no such thing as a white lie or a black lie. Either it's the truth or it isn't. If it isn't the truth, it's just simply a lie. Yeah. To win with honesty and equity that denotes integrity. Yeah. Okay, now that was my first message to the world. Then I'd like to remind folks of what I said in mid-May 2020. Again, the great American discussion has begun. As I stated, people for honesty and equitable equality in America, which I call FIA, and Speak Up America promote. We are our own answer. Hmm? Uh, there was more to that simple statement that our first patriot, Sam Adams, first spoke. Yeah, we must make other colonies hear the need of our Boston voices. Yeah, we must voice our most dire needs, wants, and desires. And once again, we must also speak loudly with every ounce of fortitude that we can muster. Now, when he spoke that, Ben Franklin's answer was, the king will never grant our demands just because we simply ask. The brothers and sisters of humanity state we the people need not be granted what we can vote for by ballot initiatives and resolutions. The people either vote for honesty and equity in New Deal 2020 or they will never receive it. All of the aforementioned necessities of FDR's 1944 State of the Union Address will come to fruition with New Deal 2020 piggybacked, will create the atmosphere for us to actually exist in LBJ's great society. It can come to fruition by way of equitable equality. Uh, common ground with the foundation based on no one raked over the coals and again most important destitute become working class working poor become middle class wealth for the well-off shall be preserved and no individual need be left behind Now, let me elaborate on the bottom line of that for just one moment. And it boils down to this. I ran all of these thoughts past my jury of 12, which uh, on the political side, our founding fathers, uh, George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Mon President Monroe, and of course, one of our greatest uh, President Madison. Now, I also added on, obviously, Ben Franklin, who traveled with his family member, Sam Adams, to Philadelphia to sell the Declaration of Independence to the delegates from the 13 colonies. Now, we are of the mind that in this atmosphere, 
we must have a constitutional that all accusers on all sides must step forward with any and all documentation that substitutes or verifies. If they're gonna sling mud and say some things are a hoax or say, you did this, I'm squeaky clean. We've written a self-definition of character that we expect any paid taxpayer paid employee must fill out. Now, once they've described their souls, polygraphs have been verified by our government as necessary. In the FBI hearings, the Senator Trey Gowdy stood up and boomed. Why should I believe anything you say, sir? You have not taken your polygraph for over two years. Now, did they ever tell the people that were doing this? No. But if it's good enough for the people who keep us all safe from terrorism and crime, is it not good enough for them to prove their honesty to the people they say should believe in them and condone everything they do and take their word for it? What's good for the goose is good for the gander in this case. Now, of course, there are many things that aren't good for the goose, the gander, or anybody. And these are the things we can weed out. Okay, so he said, she said, will no longer be thrown against the wall to see what sticks. And while we're mentioning that part, I personally am of the opinion that if we want to clear all this Trump stuff, Gates stuff up, uh, even, even this Bill Cosby, whatever, challenge publicly people who accuse to take a polygraph of what they know and what, uh, against what they're speculating. If a woman says a man did this to her, or even someone says someone's doing something to their kids or abusing, whatever, challenge them to take a polygraph and, and, and show they have documentation. Like I said, once you put it in that realm, if they did it, there should be proof, or you shouldn't accuse them. If someone accuses you and you didn't do it, you should be able to take a polygraph before it even gets to court and fill out our self-determination of character form with it. And at least give the judges and the juries uh, some meat to decide where the truth lies. Now with that, we want everybody who is on the taxpayer's paycheck, as I say, I'll make sure I make this plain. All jurors are included. They may not be on the taxpayer's paycheck, but if we're gonna have them decide anyone's fate, even a judge decide their fate, we need to know that it isn't to crapshoot among facts. There is only one fact. It is true or it is not true. There is no gray area and there can't remain any gray area. Get right down to what did they know and when did they know it. 
implementing this system will take three to nine months to discover the truth. Not 18 months to two years of runaround. The biggest fear here is we have seen with the January 6th hearings that there are police officers, officials, who said they treated everybody equally and thought of everybody equally when they didn't. This will expose pure truth. And as I stayed along the way, they who fear honesty have created their own glass house that surrounds them. And as I stated in section four of New Deal 2020, intention to deceive the people shall be deemed contempt against the people. Now, on the financial end, the naysayers ask, where's the money? Well, the people for honesty and equity in America answer in section one, $15 per hour minimum, a basic tax rate for businesses and corporations must be a minimum of 20%. We need to create a 2.5 gross sales dividend for the workers, hourly dividend to be accrued, accrued, excuse me, quarterly. We call it the American Workers Dividend. Uh, at that point, uh, our tax rate was 25%, but to offset the wages, we will drop it down to 20%. Now, corporate and business reinvestment must be taxed at that same 20%. Uh, when it's not taxed for the betterment of the people, that leaves corporations to just pay the salaries. They don't have to pay taxes on that and reinvest all they want in themselves. But the people get absolutely nothing. Another part of the savings is we propose a merger of what's known now as Mass Health Romney Care and Obamacare to cherry pick the best from both. Create a national insurance situation where people pay for their own insurance at 7%, seven cents on a dollar. So the businesses don't have to fork out all of these funds to help provide it and keep the costs down for the worker. So businesses also save that money even though they think they're getting raked over the coals. Actually, we alleviate a lot. Okay. <clears throat> now, a 1.5% increase in all FICA per contributor will provide a 50% raise in cash benefit and a 10K death benefit for all SSI SSDI dependents plus a 50% raise in cash benefit for state unemployment and the provision of family maternity hardship 
in medical leave. Here lies how many trillions in additional tax dollars? Dollars available to add on top of present spending? Do the math. Crunch the numbers. Here's the money. We the people must herald our local town halls, country, county, and township seats, our state houses and governors, and Congress to request, require, and insist, if necessary, demand that these many most important issues be presented by way of ballot resolutions on the 2024 election ballot. We must for ourselves create the vehicle to vote for equitable equality. Don't deceive the people. Cures instead of Band-Aids. From Pioneer Valley Access TV. Let the great discussion begin. Okay. No. I believe I've done this before, but let me remind you, I believe the atmosphere in America has more people paying attention than they did many months ago. Messages to the world, mid-January 2022. We're not going to take it. As I attempt to follow the lead of the most perfect entity to grace the earth, I shall be mindful of Sermon on the Mount. I will speak to whoever chooses to listen. Now, I mention my six political people on the jury of 12. I ran all of this by. But I didn't mention the common link. All the peoples of the world or the greatest percentage of people in the world have through what I call our most enlightened prophets. And they include Moses, Jesus Christ, the Dalai Lama, Muhammad, the great Buddha, etc. And the one thing that we all, they all have in common is no matter how they word it, our Christian and Judean Ten Commandments say, love thy neighbor as thyself. But everyone else I mention says, in one way or another, treat people the way you want to be treated. Now, this is our common link across the globe. Whether you're Hindu, it doesn't matter. They all teach and preach that same thing. So instead of starting at the top with all of our differences, we need to tell our children, let's build from the bottom where we all have common ground. Now to go on, <laughs> in the Nixon era, Pete Townsend stated, they'll be dancing in the streets with our children at our feet and the morals we all worship will soon be gone? The proof is in the pudding. <laughs> gone has achieved fruition. Ten years after, said, and Alvin Lee, I'd love to change the world, but I don't know what to do. Well, here is the blueprinted outline, 50-something years later, of what to do. Uh... We, the people, must breed honesty and equitable equality. You know, just, as, just as I stated, the golden rule is the pillar and cornerstone that applies. Neil Diamond stated, the, the road is long, but the road, load, it doesn't weigh me down at all. It does not encumber me. Don't let him be heavy. Remember, he's your brother. 
and we can all be on the way to we can share. If we do not address the unaddressed, if we do not create honesty and equitable equality, if we do not ratify New Deal 2020, will politics and courts, socioethnics and socioeconomics ever be effectively addressed even in my great-grandchildren's lifetime? We, the people, must step up to the plate. Once again, John Adams stated in the 1770s, what does not begin with honesty rarely ends in honesty. In the 1960s, Lester Chambers stated, the time has come today. The brothers and sisters of humanity in tandem with all peace and justice and common ground associates say, the time is past due today. I say, as in my song, for peace and justice, we can save God's world today. The taxpaying voters of America must mandate assurance that our students from day one of nursery school, preschool are taught Though we pray differently, look differently, eat different foods, we are all American. Why do we wait until adulthood and only if citizens enter the military to promote <coughs> and insist that one, one America be the order of the day? These things must be taught at day one. Equal justice under equal law does not exist. In practice, it is discretionary. Houses of correction correct a minimum percentage of next to nothing. We, the people, must bring the necessary changes for fruition. If we do not, how many more generations will be at each other's throats, never coexisting in harmony? Graham Nash stated in the 70s, once again, we can change the world, rearrange the world. It's dying if you believe in justice, dying if you believe in freedom. <laughs> I say, we the people must open up the door. Ratification of the Taylor Floyd Honesty and Equity Amendment in tandem with the Arbery Brooks New Deal 2020 can do much to ensure that we don't get fooled again. We can mandate skin in the game, a piece of the pie, preservation of personal pursuits of happiness, not to include deeds vile, restrictive to others. No one gets raked over the coals, but it also takes care of or includes sedition. We are putting it in these amendments that sedition is treason against the people. Plain and simple. And those who openly enable it are in contempt of the people. We must call dishonesty and deception out into the open air and sunlight. Like I say, bottom line, accusers and whistleblowers must answer the self-definition of character questionnaire. Take the same polygraph that the Senate Oversight Committee requires of all federal agents. Publicly challenge the accused or the accuser to do the same. Do not deceive the people. Do not deceive thyself. They who fear truth have crafted their own house of glass. It now surrounds them. As I said, what was not good for the goose will never be good for the gander. Pioneer Valley Access TV. Messages to the world on Northampton Open Media. 
at www.northamptontv.org. Please share everywhere. Good day. I'll be back next week with more messages.